Great. Hi there. Hello and welcome to the Town at Eastbourne live making workshop. My name is Rachel and this is the second artist led making workshop that I'm doing in this series. So if you were here last week we were looking at mono printing and this week we're getting inky again but we're experimenting with colour in a folding, paper folding dip dye technique called Arezzo Megami. So you can see some of the examples here. I'll just show you a few as maybe some more people are joining us, which is brilliant. So some different ones. Lovely. So nice seeing some familiar names joining us today. Just super nice. Great. So you can also see some of the things hanging behind me as well that I've made. Um so while other people might be joining us, so all these workshops, ooh, all of these workshops are part of the hashtag Makeshift Studio project, which if you're not familiar with it already, is a simple making challenge set by the Towner team each week using materials and equipment that you'll probably find at home. Um, so you can access all the previous recordings of the workshops on this Instagram at hello underscore Towner, uh, also on the Facebook and the website too. So, so nice to see so many of us. Great. Um, so this week's making prompt is make and take pride because we're celebrating pride this weekend and also this is part of an online event, Pride Online 2020 as well. So we're also taking inspiration from a really beautiful artwork in the town of collection by artist Christopher Wood and it's a street fair scene, a colourful street fair. So this week is all about experimenting with colour, um, decoration and celebration too. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, each week we go over a few points just before we get started. So it's a reminder that everyone is really welcome to take part and make along or just watch along today. Um, please do ask permission if you're going to borrow anything. If you're a child, please do ask um, an adult to work with you as well. Um, if you're going to use any extra materials, please don't use anything sharp, precious or breakable. And if you've got any questions or comments, and some of you are already adding comments, it's really nice to see those um, so that I can hear about how people are getting on. Um, this week is partic particularly experimental, so I'm sure everyone's got different materials. It'd be really great to hear how you're getting along with your things today. Lovely. So let's get started. I'll take you through the um, materials and equipment that we're going to need. I'll also offer some alternatives if you haven't been able to find certain things that's okay because you maybe have something else that will work well too. So just move these things to one side like that and yeah so the first things first I would have maybe a clear work surface to start with. So I'm working inside today because um, the sound is probably going to be better but if you can be outside why not because this is a nice activity for that but I've got a um, wipeable surface to work on so that everything's contained because we will be getting a bit inky today. So that's the first thing. We're going to be making our own ink. You might have some food colour at home or you might even have coloured inks and that's brilliant so that all you would need is the food colour, um, some little dishes to put those in and some water. So I've got a water spray but you might have um, a small cup of water and a spoon and that's fine too. Um, but if you don't have food colour and you don't have coloured inks, we can actually make our own ink using water-based pens, which I have been experimenting with a lot this week and I just enjoy it. You can see that I've made quite a lot of stuff. Um, so they just need to be water-based, so Sharpies won't work for this one or permanent pens, but it's amazing what you can do even with like the back of the drawer old pens. This is a good one to use them up with. So that's what we need for our ink. Next thing is our paper. So this is a paper folding technique um, and I'm using coffee filters today which I picked up from my local corner shop. So they are white coffee filters and they're sealed at the one edge and the bottom edge. If you don't have ones that look like this, you might have some bigger ones that are already round and that's fine to work with as well. But also, so this normally uses rice paper which is an absorbent kind of paper. So we just got a comment. Great, yes, which is an absorbent kind of paper. Um, 
So that means that things that which will work better have that little bit of absorbency. So this is an example of when I just use normal printer paper, which does work fine, and this one as well, but you can really see a difference between this one and this one here. So this is newsprint, and if you get fish and chips, your fish and chips will probably be wrapped in this sort of paper. So if you've got any of that lying around, maybe if it's without the chips on it, you could have a go at that. And also, just some paper tablecloth. So that's paper tablecloth. Um, so here's it without anything on. I've got so many papers on my desk here. So that's it without anything on. And this is a sort of tissuey one. So that's paper tablecloth. And that's what we'll be using and experimenting with. But definitely have a go at lots of different papers and I'd love to hear what works and what doesn't. So we'll need scissors for that as well. Yeah, brilliant. So that's our ink and our paper. If you would like to create one of these hanging decorations, this uses three of our folded coffee filters like this. And then you'll also just need some string, glue or tape, and a whole punch. Or scissors will work as well. Oh, I love that a great comment. Any excuse for fish and chips? I know. <laughs> great, so I think that's everything. Just check off my list. Lovely, let's get started. Let's create our own ink. So I'm just going to use these glass dishes that I've got and some bigger bowls as well. So things that are ceramic or glass or plastic, they'll all work fine for this. And it's quite fun, this idea. Oh, a huge, someone's got a huge stack of fish and chip paper. Fantastic. Um, this is quite a fun thing to do, which you wouldn't normally be, I don't know, doing, I, I guess, at all. But I'm just going to use my water-based pen to go over all the bottom of my bowl like this. I mean, what a great drawing surface, actually, because you can just remove it so easily. So the ink is sitting on the bottom of that bowl there, which is what I want. So it's not being absorbed, it's just been sitting there. So that's one colour done. So I was saying about those sort of pens that are just sort of, you know, running out a little bit. So I've got a few of those. So I'm going to finish off those and get the last of the ink I can from that pen. Like that. But I might need to supplement that with a little bit more of another colour. Like this. So today it really is about experimentation. So if you actually just really enjoy making the inks, I wonder what else you can do with these inks. Oh, sorry about that. Actually, after you've made them. Uh, da, da, da. So you can see there that I've got three different sort of shades of red. because I didn't have enough, <laughs> just using one pen. And then I'm gonna take another color and once you've done a few experiments, if you've only got one colour pen, I wonder if you could experiment with creating different shades and different tones, even with that one colour, just adding more or less water. But I've got a few colours, so I want to see which is the sort of, you know, how they look next to each other and create different patterns. Right, so that's a sort of greeny blue. Maybe I'll try a final one in a lighter blue. Great. You can always go back in and make more of your ink after you've started. Right, so I've got four containers here with pen at the bottom, covering the bottom of all of them. And I'm just going to get my water spray, but this might be your jug of water, and just spray in the bottom there so you can see how it's got the ink nice and liquid in there. I don't know, you can see actually that one's quite fluorescent, <laughs> but this one you might see a bit better how it's sitting on the bottom there. So depending how much water you add will depend the um, how bright your ink is. So I've probably added in about half a teaspoon, um, but it really is about trying out what you can get from your different colors. Lovely, great. So four colors ready to go, great. And so the next step is preparing our paper. 
So I'm going to take a coffee filter like this, the one that I was saying about it's got a fold, uh, a seam at the side and one at the bottom. If you don't have one like that and you just got different types of paper, you can still do this, but just start folding your paper in different ways. Um, and actually I'll show you afterwards how to use some of the other paper. So stay tuned. Right, so I'm gonna cut off that side edge there. Cut that off. And then I'm gonna fold it half like this. Lovely. And then just cut off the bottom. So that means I can open up the whole coffee filter into a lovely sort of rainbow shape. Right, and then I'm going to fold it into a concertina, which is like a fan. So you can sort of see those shapes behind me. So it's sort of folding it one way, turning it over, fold it back again, turn it over, fold it back again, all the way to the other side. I think I do need a fan today as well. So. Um, so maybe you could have a really colourful fan for uh, fanning yourself on this hot day. So I've got that ready in my concertina shape like so. And then simply just need to fold it into a smaller shape that I can handle. So I'll do this slowly again. So I folded that top corner down and then I'm going to fold it again in on itself. If you're using something different, I'll show you how to use just a flat sheet of paper as well. But if you want to have a go and get ready as well, you can just fold it any way you want to. That's the experimental bit as well. So let's get dipping into our colour. Quite exciting. Right, so I'm going to start putting different corners and different sides into the colours. So you can't see these ones as well because I've got the bowl covered. But actually, hopefully in these glass ones you can see a bit better. Whoa, so that's quite vibrant now. And maybe a bit of blue on top of the yellow. Lovely. Ooh, very vibrant. So I'm going to carefully open that up. And if you've got thinner paper, just take your time and open it up so that it doesn't tear. Lovely. It stays in one piece. Ta-da! And also, this is a good point to have your, if you're working outdoors, you can lay it on the ground to dry, but I can lay it on my mat to dry as well. Lovely, so you can really see how there's sort of, I have got different shapes there on that. And I'll lay, lay that down to dry so that the colors don't continue going in different directions. You could hang it up and that might be really interesting because you'll get the colors running down. Great, oh lovely. So I'm going to show you how to do a flat sheet of paper if you didn't have um, the rounder coffee filter. So I'm just going to use... Someone said they had some newsprint, so I've got a small piece of newsprint here. And I'm going to fold it into that concertina shape again. Like this. So back on itself. Back on itself. So it really can experiment with different size folds, different shapes, and if you've got, you know, different size hands, maybe like for a little one that wants to make as well, you can even scrunch it up and it'd be a bit more tie-dye as well. Great, so I folded it into that fan concertina, and then I'm going to fold it into a triangle, triangle at the top here, and then fold that back, and then across again into a triangle and then fold that down and across again another triangle so this is a fold that I quite like because it gives you a very regimented pattern which I think looks really pretty so I've got a little bit of ink left in my bowls but actually I was going to show you as well what I made from the fourth um, artist led making session that artist Amy Lung actually did she made her own berry ink so I've got some of that to hand I don't know we've got Amy with us today, so I'm going to pour a little bit of that in the dish and add in another colour and add some water in there. So you can watch how to make berry ink with Amy Lung on the um, one of the previous sessions. Okay, so I've got my folded paper ready to go, and I'm just going to start again, same technique, just dipping it in to the different sides. So this is less absorbent than the coffee filter, but I think it should still have a nice colour on it. So 
so we'll see. We'll see how it turns out. It's all an experiment, isn't it? And maybe some blue on there as well. You can see I'm just sitting it. I'm tipping the bowl so that it get the ink gathers at one side. And then let's have a little look. Ooh. So we'll open that one up. Oh, I put a lot of ink on this one and it's very delicate paper. I'll take my time and open that carefully. I might even have to pop it down and open it carefully. Move it so you can see the reveal as well. Ooh, doo -doo. I really could do this all day, I think. Um, so bear in mind, the more ink you put on, the more ink will come off onto your fingers as well. But it is all water-based stuff, so it will wash off, so not to worry too much about that. Lovely. So that's quite a delicate one, actually. Look quite like a delicate tie-dye effect, which looks really nice. Oh, great. Um, and you can see from some of the other examples I'll just show you now, the colour really varies, so that's quite a nice... Um, I use highlighters for this one, and fluorescent pens. And whereas this one, I did use some food colouring. So if you're wondering how I got that, it's quite so vibrant. That was food colouring there. And this one, the really beautiful red spots are the um, berry ink. So I would advise having a go at that one if you fancy um, making your own ink in a different way as well. So that's, you know, the, that's it really. There's so much you can do with that as well. You can make lots of different things. Um, I'm going to show you how to create one of these now, these circular decorations. Um, but do feel free to keep experimenting if you're making along and just, you know, look in and see what how to make one of these if you want to a bit later. So I'll move this to one side to dry. There we go. And here's some I had earlier made. So these are the lovely highlighter ones I've made. Oh, actually I've got a few different options. That one's quite nice. Let me swap that one in. So you can make design decisions as well and choose what you want to make. Great. So I've got the three coffee filters here ready to go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold them back into their concertina shapes just to check. Yep, so there's one there. Um, on there and on there lovely and I'm going to grab my put the balls in nicely in a pile they don't fall off and um, grab my tape or my glue stick I'll show you with some tape and just so this is masking tape which is quite nice because you don't have to uh, you don't have to use any scissors and just line them up and stick them together like that so I've got one together, and I'm going to do the same for the other one. Like so. Great. And at this stage here, if you wanted to, or I don't know if anyone's ever made snowflakes before, you could create, you could fold it back up into your concertina, all those pieces just fold together, the three filters and start cutting into them to have different edges. So some of the ones behind me have different shaped edges. So grab my scissors. Uh, I'm gonna do something quite simple just on the top, just to show you, but you can be a bit more experimental. Yeah, someone's put here, it's a good day for drying paper. It really is, it really is. I'm making some really colorful decorations maybe to hang outside that other people can see. It's just nice. Okay, so I'm just actually cutting off the two corners, so it's like a nice, um, I don't know, like a starburst or a flower. Oh, someone said they remind me of the 70s Christmas decorations, but in a nice way. That's good, that's good. So, there we go. So you can see here that I've got a nice pattern that goes all the way around the edge. But you could even cut into the centre as well. Try that out. And I'm going to tape, ooh, stick that final edge together. Like so. Ooh, cut that bit down. Lovely. So I've got a complete ooh, 
circle ring there, which looks quite nice. And then I'm just gonna make a hole to hang it up. So I use a hole punch, but you might use just some scissors just to cut a small hole and that'll work as well. So that's lined up. Ooh, didn't actually punch through. Oh no, it has. Brilliant. And then get some string. On the town of rations list as well, there's also shoelaces, so you could always have some fancy fun with your shoelaces. Some decorations on there. Ooh. And then just thread it through. Get all of that through next time. There we go. So you've got your very own Arutsu Megami hanging decoration. So I might tie a knot in that so that it's together really nicely. Like so. Oh, someone says they're going to fill their windows with them. That'd be so beautiful. I think they'd be really nice in the windows because then people passing by can see them. You can also like treat it as a bit of like a window display, your own window display, and sort of really make that look super nice. Um, I quite like these ones as well that are just, um, so that is just putting the concertina back together like that. A little bit of tape. Ooh very noisy tape like so and then hole punching again or using your scissors to create a hole Ooh, very noisy and then if you create a whole series of those you can thread them all together and have these lovely hanging down decorations too great so it really is as simple as that. Oh my gosh, someone's also gonna hang them off their trees. Oh, that looks so beautiful. Okay, <clears throat> so that is pretty much it. Really thank you so much for watching, if you watched along or made along. It'd be great to sort of see how, how some of your designs have turned out. And if you're comfortable sharing those with us, you can do so and tag us at Hello Towner at hello underscore towner and use the hashtag makeshift studio that'd be really super um please don't share any photos unless you've got permission of people if you're taking photos of people and a reminder that the next workshop is thursday at two again and if you're not able to take part in the live sessions really don't worry there's a downloadable making guide that you can watch and you can also watch this video back as well so that's available on the if you look on this instagram bio and um, but also on the website and the facebook page too um oh finally there's a quick message from the towner team so if you're enjoying taking part in these artist artist-led live making workshops as much as i am um please consider nominating us for the kids in museums award from home that'd be really great so you can find a link to that um on the instagram post that will come after this video um but again just thank you so much for everyone for taking part um Oh, someone said I can't wait to fill my house with these I know I just I feel like I could just fill my whole room it could keep going on forever um, but yeah thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time bye